having the direction fixed on I3 now. And so let's move on to, well, we're going to skip part B because that's just the same kind of idea with a different circuit. And we'll move on to part C. Part C has to do with power dissipated. In fact, that's very much related to part D, which is the power supplied. Uh, dissipated refers to the resistors and the supplying refers to my voltage. But let's put all these together in the one single table. This is referring, of course, to the amount of power used or supplied by any part of the circuit is given by I times V. Technically delta V, but we just usually use V for voltage drop. You're going to supply energy or positive power if your potential is positive. And you're going to be draining away power if your voltage drop is negative. And most cases we just usually deal with uh, the magnitude dissipated, but we can expand this some more and say delta V is I times R. Technically there's a negative in there, but since we're talking about dissipation, we can kind of drop that. But if you must, we can put that in there like that. Whereas for the batteries, we can just use this one. The one tiny little detail is uh, depending on which way the current goes through the battery, you could be gaining power or sucking up power, basically charging up the battery over time. Okay, so we have, let's say the components, which is we have R1, R2, R3. This answers part C. And then V1, V2, that answers part D. We definitely need to write down what the current is for all these different things. For R1, we know it's 6 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. R2 is 4 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. R3 is 2 times 10 to the minus 4 amps, whereas V1 is the same as I1, and V2 is the same as I3. So then the power dissipated is either given by I square times R or I times V for the batteries. And we're just going to put an absolute value sign on there just to keep things a little simpler. So I square times R is going to give us that much. And then the other ones, I'm not going to necessarily write out every little thing. And that's the power consumed by each of the resistors. Then same thing for the battery, except of course it's just P equals I times V, so there's no square involved. And the other one gives us 2.8 times 10 to mass 4 watts. And just as a fun comparison here, this is a good way to check your answer, by the way. If you sum up all the power supply, you get 9.6 times 10 to the minus 4 watts. And if you do the same thing for all the power consumed by the resistor, you actually get the same number. Which would make sense, right? Because all the power supply should be equal to all the power consumed. And that's a demonstration of how to set up a fairly simple Kirchhoff's law and then using substitution to solve three equations for three unknowns simultaneously.